Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I am going to show you how my brain works. <laughs> Might be a short trip. <laughs> All right, so I am required by Artemat to do a bio for all my little boxes. And I try to come up with something original every time that pertains to what it is I'm selling. All right, so here's my little bios. I gotta cut, oh sorry, cut them into strips and they go in the box. That's not what this video is about. This video is about this. These are scraps off the bottom of the bios. And there are large pieces and there's very skinny pieces. Now I usually don't save these, but I certainly save these others because I make things out of them. I know, don't faint. <laughs> I don't like throwing away good white paper because some tree died for it. So I think we ought to honor the tree <laughs> by making something more. So I get two uses out of my paper. I get these lovely strips and I am I am going to get rid of these because really I don't have the time to do anything with these these tiny things so in the trash they go. But these I do. These will become books. Yep, I know. Don't faint. Um, I need to measure these guys to see. Let me do one because two will squirm out of my fingers. So these are... Is there a glare on here? I'm sorry. These are one, a little over one and a quarter inches wide, which is fine. I would like them to be half that size. So I think, what is it? One inch divided by two is half divided, one and a quarter is what, three fourths? So I want them to be three fourths of an inch tall. So what I will do is I will take my paper cutter once again and I will cut all these little pieces of paper into three quarters of an inch, which I think, if I remember correctly, is this line right here, because this is one inch. And I hope this is correct. Beep, 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 beep. Let's see. Oh my God, I'm like not a mathematician. <laughs> there is not exactly a math. Okay, well that was a mistake. <laughs> I have one fatter than the other. Oh my. Okay, so maybe that is not, let's see, that's one inch. That's three fourths, one half, and then the other, the, the metal bar should be a half. I don't understand why it's not equal. Okay, so now we have to utilize <laughs> the calculator. Let us see what we can do with this mess. All right, so we have 1.25 divided by two equals 0.625. So it's not quite three quarters of an inch because a quarter of an inch is 0.75, half is 0.5. So I'm not gonna be able to do, well, it doesn't matter. I, I guess what I would do is I will, <coughs> Let me see what an inch looks like on here. See if I like the inch size better. I think I'm going to have to go with the smaller ones. So if I'm going to do this and try to get them in half. Now that I'm going to waste this one because I want to see what half is. I'm going to measure this and see what half is to see if I can get it on my paper cutter. Because you know, cutting paper that looks like this with scissors, the end product does not look nice and, and fresh. So it is not quite three quarters of an inch, which would be 0.75. Here is the, I'm trying to maximize. I know this seems really very picky and anal retentive, but it is. <laughs> Um, it is. That's one quarter, two quarter. See, and three would be 0.75. This is 0.625. 
is this is what the half mark is. So it is one, two, three, four, five. It's between five eighths and six eighths. It's this mark right here. And I'm not going to find anything that particular on this one. I probably could do it if with some other paper cutter, but honestly, it's not worth the effort. So let me erase this and we will go with okay let, let me show you what I'm trying to replicate that way all of this makes sense although I'm sure if you don't do this kind of stuff it's not going to make sense what I am doing is I'm making very tiny little books for my artimat stuff so I'm take I'm, I'm trying to use my scraps up um, the thing is, is I bought from a lady who does these already. They're very tiny. They come, I can buy, I think, 25 or 100 at a time, and these are a half inch. So I think that's what I will do. I will cut this at a half inch. Um, I need 150 of these little books. And there's not 150 in there, and I don't want to spend any more money, so I'm going to make these myself, which I have done in the past, no biggie. So let's see, one half inch should be this one. Although I did this before and it wasn't. <laughs> so let's see, one half inch should be this metal bar. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't think that's right. Okay, so let's do it with the ruler and see what it looks like. <coughs> Sorry, I have residue cold or crud from the other incident that took three weeks to get over. All right, here's one half. Let's see where one half is on this. I, it's hard to do here. Well, son of a gun, it is the metal bar. All right, so I guess that is the half inch. Let's try it and see. So the metal bar, if we line it up properly, which means this is really annoying. Um, I have a giant paper cutter, but honestly, this is overkill for a giant paper cutter. And I don't know if it's, see it's not, yeah it is. How about that? Look at that, half inch. All right, so what I have to do is I have to cut like a bazillion of these to make one little book. So what I do is I go to the scrap basket that I keep for all my white paper scraps and I um, use them for books. So I'll cut all these. Uh, let me cut a bunch of these off camera because this is really persnickety cutting and um, I will be back with a stack of papers. Alrighty, I cut my stuff with a different paper cutter and I have to tell you, as much as I love this paper cutter, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Let me pull this one out. I've had this one for many years, and I do like it. I'm not crazy about this part. Um, and I'm also not crazy about this. These things are $9, almost $10 a package of two, and they don't last nearly as long as a guillotine cutter. The upside to this one is, is that I can do a half an inch on here where I couldn't do it on the other cutter. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship and the place I have to store it in is small enough this will fit. Though I would like one of those other nice larger ones that cost about 90 bucks but I'm not going to spend the money and <clears throat> I don't have the space. So just going to have to deal with this little booger for the time being. I try not to use it but this time I had to. All right, so I cut up my strips. They're not perfect, but I can trim later. So what I'm thinking is I would like 
my books to be a half an inch in width. So I'm going to mark one inch. Where's the pencil? Oh, I put it away. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm going to mark one inch on here and then, you know, they would be folded in half or something close to half <laughs> the rate I'm going. Um, <clears throat> I like making little books, but what I really like is using up my scraps where I'm not spending money to make an item for AOM when I already have the stuff here at home and I don't have to spend a lot of money to replicate something that I've done a million times. Using scraps, and I say scraps, but leftover items, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't have to be polite. <laughs> I do like using things that I've already cut or saved so that I can make my profit margin better. Because when people go to the Artemat machines, each item is $5 but they split the profit with you 50-50. So I only get $2.50 per item that I make. I send 50 to 100 a month. And in order to make more for my bottom line, you know, make more profit, I have to be able to be as frugal with my items as I can be. So when I cut something, I save the cut ends both for the wood that I use, i.e. popsicle sticks, tongue depressors, and coffee stirrers. Um, I save those items so that I can come up with an idea to use them up. It is much more profitable that way for me than to constantly buy new things or, you know, keep buying supplies. So I buy my supplies in bulk and then I save all my cut ends and then with those cut ends, I create yet another thing that is left over from the first things that I created, and that saves me money. And if you're going to be an Artemat person, your brain has to work like that because you're not making a huge profit. And a lot of these items take me a month to make. So that means I spend many hours watching YouTube, Netflix, <laughs> and, um, you know, I would like to make a bigger profit. I would like to make a nice profit. While I'm not in this just for the money, it, it still is good to make a profit. All right, so I'm going to cut these guys. I'm not going to use scissors because I'm not very good with cutting straight on scissors. I cut something yesterday with scissors and I was horrified. <laughs> all right, here's my first set for my little book. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to cut all these up and then I'll be back to show you what I do next. Okay, so as I'm cutting these up, I realize I made a mistake and I should have cut every half an inch. So these guys, I have eight of these done and now I'm going to go back and mark these for every half inch or, yeah, I think I need to do it that way. That way I get it all cut up and I'm finished with it. So I have to mark every half an inch and the reason I'm doing that is because it's hard to fold these in half. So I'm going to do these at half, the book will be half an inch in width and whatever this height is, I don't know, half, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, doesn't matter. All right, so let me do half an inch and then I'll show you what my plan is. Although <laughs> nothing goes the way it's supposed to. All right, so here's about half an inch. And I really like cutting these with the X-Acto knife better than scissors. I don't know why. It's kind of nuts, but... All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut these guys in half. Ooh, look at that. There's some that were not lined up properly, and look at that. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. So, come on tilt the other way. I'm going to take all these little guys and stack them up and show you what I'm going to do. These are going to be a book. A very tiny little book. And no, nothing matches here yet, but it will. 
And honestly, it doesn't really matter if it matches or not. Wait till you see what I'm going to do with it. All right, so I'm going to take these guys. And I'm going to put this full clip on it, or clip, whatever everybody calls these things. I don't know what these people call, what people call them. Um, I think I need to use a different kind. I think this works better. And I don't have very many of these. Let's do it this way. Well, they're not even even in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> for now, I don't care they're not even here. That's, that's not an issue for me, at least not yet. So I'm going to take these and make sure it's clamped down so this stays pretty firm. You can use cheap glue. You can use good glue. I like art glitter glue because I think it's a much better glue than some of the others. And I don't care these aren't acid free because this stuff's not going to last a hundred years. If it does, I, I will be very surprised. Although I will be long gone. All right, so I'm going to smear the glue on here. There you go. I'm going to let it kind of get tacky. None of these are cut even, and that's fine. I would like them to kind of be half an inch. And no, it's not the one twelfth that book um, that miniature people use. They use the one twelfth or one twenty fourth measurement. I'm not going for that. That's not the point of this. This is for Artemat, and it makes no difference. All right, so <clears throat> I like the thickness of what the little book will be. This is probably plenty of paper for that because I need three per whoops three per display. So I'm gonna take this and kind of stack them and kind of pinch I need to go buy more of these. I think I have six, and that's it. And so this is going to take a long time because I need 150 of these. So <laughs> that's going to be a while. And thank goodness I have time. Maybe not the money, but I do have the time. So when I make these, um, what I'm spending on them is minimal because the paper was scraps. The um, glue I already had and I've got a ton of it, and if I run out of this, then I can use Elmer's. I have enough glue, I won't be purchasing glue for this project. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna use for book covers. And no, it's not what you think it is. All right, let me kind of do the rest of these, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I got some of these glued. You can see I've got four glued, and I got four more to go. I don't want to use new paper for any of this. I want to use leftover stuff. So I went through my little green colored scrap box, my mini scraps, bing, and I picked some pieces out that I know I can cut down to meet the size of these little guys. So let's see. Is this guy tacky? He tacky. Tacky, tacky, tacky. So I'm going to take a look. Voila. <laughs> I'm going to take this, and I don't care that it doesn't match because I can trim the top and the bottom. And I'm going to just rake my fingernail over it. Take it out, and I'm going to put glue on the front and the back page because anything else in between does not matter. Oops! All right, so I'm gonna put this in here. Oh, 
hold it down. I'm going to kind of cut the paper off here. Yay, didn't do a good job. Oh, that's because it was glued on the other end of this paper, the original. Okay, so I'm going to take this, just kind of smooth it out right there to make it flat because I need for it to be flat. And voila, there's a book. And it didn't cost me any money to make this other than the original supplies that I bought. And we're done. So this is going to be sitting on a shelf where the only thing you see on the book is this. You're not going to see any other part of the book except for the spine. So that's why none of this really actually matters, although it matters that the bottom is flat because it's going to sit on a shelf and you want it to look nice. So we'll do the nice thing. I'm going to take this and again with the little X-Acto knife that I changed my blade because it was getting a tad dull. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to trim all this fiddly stuff off. Now this is not a time versus cost effective sort of thing because I have lots of time and the money's been spent to buy the original supplies so I don't have to worry about that and that is not straight to save my life. <laughs> let us do this again. Only let's see if we can make this nice and straight. Let's be a little more careful Vicki. Little more careful. I'm trying to mash down as hard as I can on this, but when you cut thick stuff like this, sometimes that ruler flops around like a fish. All right. Let's see. Yep, a little better. It's a skinny book, but it's good enough. And then, let's see, I need to trim this part. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is so not straight. <laughs> if I keep trimming, I'm not going to have a book. Now, I need 150 of these, and as much TV as I watch, it will take me no time at all. I'll do 15 or 20 a day until I get what I need. Got that. All right, now I need to trim this off because this is just paper. This part, it looks really good at the top, but this part does not, so we need to take a hair little hair off make it even because it's got to sit on a flat surface and I don't want it to be rounded or anything I really want it to be flat okay so there we go so it will sit on the surface like this oh uh, let's see so I need three per artemat creation and I'm only using scraps the only thing is that you really it you're not going to be able to open the book because it's going to sit on, it's going to be glued at the bottom and then it's going to be glued here so that you don't actually see any of the miscuts or anything on these sides. If you want it to look more authentic or you want it to look aged, you can use scrap coffee dyed paper or you can take a little bit of, um, what's that stuff called? E the dye pads. My brain has just distress inks, ink pad, and you can kind of, you know, go around it. The thing is, is it's a waste of ink for anywhere except for the top. Now, you're not going to see the side, and you're not going to see the bottom. All you're going to see is the top and the spine. So, it would be kind of silly to go crazy with this on here and all these sides because they're going to be covered in glue and glued onto a piece of wood. All right, so... Let's go to the next one. I mean, these are so easy. And I have a bazillion little pieces of scrap paper, the colored scrap paper. I tried to pick stuff that would make interesting pieces. I'm going to do them in all the colors that, of scraps that I have that are the, the width and the length that I need. And then, ta-da, that'll be it. All right, so let's take this guy. And this is the glued in right here. Let's see if we can, yep, there we go. All 
I might want to kind of make it a little bit even there. Make it look nice on the top so I don't have to do a whole lot of trimming. And then run the book on the flat surface. And so you're going to have a kind of a black book with the green on it. And then, actually, let me take scissors. Maybe this will go better if I use little scissors. I can't get the scissors to make this pretty. It's just not going to happen. And even if you use large scissors, what it does is it pinches the paper, and then you get nice straight, and then it'll go out like that at the top. So you're better off using a blade for this than anything else. Only if you can make straight, <laughs> straight lines, which evidently I cannot do. Okay, so there's that. And the bottom is a little shifty. So, since the paper's basically flat on the bottom, all I need to do is trim the cover. And then I got another little book. So, what'll happen is these guys will sit together on the shelf and they will be glued flat on the page side. And there's two books that will sit side by side on the creation. So while I'm watching copious amounts of TV, I will cover all these little books. The thing is, is I don't want to spend more money on these, which are about the same size. Mine are a little smaller because I've already spent money on them and I want to save them for other things. I've made hundreds of these already. But the thing I did was I made them for book dangles and there's a wire piece in every one of them with an eye pin in it. And I don't want to cut them off. I don't want to ruin them. So I'm going to leave those the way they are. And then I'm going to just make little, look, see, I have other pieces of paper in here that were ready. These are the pinch ones to use for not leaving marks on things. See, these are the ones that I've already made from the past out of scrap paper. And there's no sense in using anything else because I have lots of scrap paper left over. These are too big. But I have lots of scrap paper left over and it just seemed kind of silly to me to go out and buy something when I have all this lovely paper. I would rather not use scrapbook paper because that's somebody else's artwork. I would rather use my own. See, here's one. Put these down. Here's some pieces that I, I have that are concertina or accordion and I can cut these and make it a nice nice brown colored book. I mean, there's just all kinds of ways that you can save money while you're making these things. This one needs to be trimmed down. Look at that, there's a book inside. And the only thing I have to do, have to do is to trim off the edges. Am I gonna do that now? No. <laughs> Here's another one. Book's already glued inside, ready to go. All I need to do is trim down this stuff. And ta-da, here's another one. This one has the ends bent in on it. But the thing is, is that you can make things out of little stuff. If you're, a, if you're a pack rat of scraps and things like that, then you have possibilities. Like here, look at this little book. This one has a charm, you know, to go on a, a dangle, but it opens. Now you don't have to make it open. You could glue all this stuff shut but on a dangle, I want the book to open so people can see that I didn't take shortcuts. Um, let's see, is there a dangle on this one? Is this one a dangle book? It's in here. Is this a dangle book? Yep. Yeah. All these have the eye pins in them to make them dangle books. But again, this is just scrap white paper with scrap paper that I made. And then I put the little eye pin. Actually, it's not an eye pin. I took wire and made all these myself because I had lots of extra wire I need to use up. And ta-da, here is a scrap creation that will be a dangle on some kind of a bookend. And there you go. I just, I don't see the reason in wasting this kind of stuff. These little tiny guys 
are also book dangles. Scrap leftover scrap paper. They also open, but these are these covered with my paper. See, they fit exactly. Can you hear my washing machine? It sings to me when it's done. <laughs> All right, so these are this covered with my paper, and then there's the little uh, pin on the spine so that these can dangle on something. I have lots of these, but I don't have 150 of them. I could cover these, make my life easier, but why would I do that? <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for me for today. It's a really small video, but I am still recovering from that creepy virus. I, and my test came back negative last week on Friday, but I still very I feel very slow and groggy. Um, so I'm not moving around a whole lot or doing things that I was hoping I would do. My test results came back negative. This is um, another book out of scraps, and the cover is the front of a book of paper that I bought, Japanese paper. Was it Katagami paper or something like that? Um, and so I cut up the front of the front of the book because I love the patterns and these make great books for other things. Here's thick ones where I made them kind of thick. These have the eyelets in them too. These do not. So you know, I ha I'm a pack rat of these kind of things and here are the book covers. You can buy these and then a woman sells a sheet of antique looking book um, covers. All you have to do is cut, print them off, cut them out, and then you can wrap them around these things. But that does get costly when you need 150. If you only need 10 or 20, it's no big deal. But I need 150, sometimes 300, actually three times 50. Yeah, I need 150 books. Um, and these all have the eyelets, uh, little eyelet things I put them, eye pens I put in them. And here's copies of the books. I um, separate them according to color. There's a brown, green, blue, uh, this is, I think, beige miscellaneous. Not sure what this is. Anyway, so hang on to your little scraps thinking about future projects. Don't throw everything away, but then also don't look like a hoarder either. <laughs> um, let's see, what else have I got down here? That, I think that's it for today. So that's my little book thing I'm going to do for Artemat. So I'm going to make 150 of these little tiny books with my scrap paper and glue them on the little shelf that I'm going to use for Artemat. And a project is done with little or no cost. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.